Hello my bookworms, welcome back to my channel and welcome to a fall-filled weekend reading vlog. Fall is in full force here, autumn is autumning, and I am so excited for everything that I have in store for you for this video. This vlog actually started yesterday on Friday the 13th, but surprise, surprise, the day was absolutely wild and the following is the only footage that I got. <laughs> I went to a flash tattoo event where the shop was putting forth some of the proceeds to one of our local indie bookstores for Band Book Week, and if there was any flash day that I had to go to, it was this one. I met up with Nathan from Schizophrenic Reads and we basically just hung out all day together until it was our turn to get tattooed. We got some coffee, we sat in a record store, got a couple pages in between the conversations, and this is the design that I chose. I am absolutely in love with it. It is on the front of my shin, and it complements my little ghosty and my Victorian bat so nicely. <laughs> then Caleb and I met his mom for dinner at one of our favorite places in the city where the two of us then had a little date night and saw our local theater's production of Frankenstein. I legally couldn't show any film of the set production, but it was so good and we cannot wait to visit there more. And now it is Saturday, a gloomy one at that, which was the perfect weather to make a latte, light a candle, and and finish editing Sunday's video. I'll leave it linked down below. It is a new oddly specific book recommendations and it was a lot of fun to make. And like I said, that is just the beginning of the fall activities I have on the docket for this weekend. So welcome to the vlog. Thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me for a little bit. Before I tell you what Caleb and I are getting into tonight, I wanna say thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. I am so excited to be working with Skillshare again. And since the last time we talked, my hobbyist mentality has only grown, but with a purpose. I've discovered so many classes that not only pique my creative interests, like watercolor painting, poetry, and creative writing, but also expanding my professional growth, like Procreate lettering, AI SEO marketing, Notion, because I could never figure out how to use that platform and I really want to, as well as just general productivity courses. Over the next few months, I'm really excited to continue all of these classes, and I'll be interested to see if any of y'all can catch the changes that I'll be making. Skillshare not only has courses for the topics that I had previously mentioned, but they also have career-focused classes too. There are classes covering freelancing, entrepreneurship, social media, and so much more so that you can level up in your current career or start a new side hustle. The best part of all of this is that I have a brand new offer for you all and you will want to jump on it. The first 500 people that click that link in my description will get access to 30 free days as well as 40% off of your first year of Skillshare membership. So whether you want to learn the basics of film photography or learn how to start your own creative business, Skillshare has the classes that you need to take you from beginner to pro alongside a supportive community. So check out that link down in my description to get 30 free days and 40% off your first full year. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. And let's go see what Caleb's cooking because it smells really good. <laughs> it looks so good. Good, hopefully it warms your soul. You warm my soul. <laughs> okay, so Caleb made the absolute best French onion soup ever. That cheesy bread was to die for. And now that we're uncomfortably full, we are actually leaving to go to our next fall activity. It's 8.30 right now on a Saturday and we are going out. This is very unlike us, very out of pocket. <laughs> so in a previous vlog, we had gone to this place called New Fields. It's an art museum here in Indianapolis and they had a, was it Vincent Van Gogh? It was Monet. Oh, it was Monet and Friends. So they had like a all immersive interaction active art experience for Monet and friends, like Monet and other impressionist artists. And it was really, really fun. They have a fall themed Halloween kind of exhibit experience like called Harvest Night. And I have never been. Caleb went last year. I think I was working. So he knows what to expect. I don't. I'm really excited. It's supposed to be very cool, very fun. We're going to experience it together. So We're going to get going. <laughs> It took us literally like 17 years to get in here. Yeah. Everyone and their mother is trying to get into this parking lot right now. And then and their cousins. <laughs> and their cousins. It was ridiculous, but we're here. We made it. <laughs> Oh 
my god, yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> Happy Sunday. We're sort of doing like a little Sunday reset here this morning. I'm hosting a little fall craft day with my friend group, so that means that we have to clean the entire house. <laughs> So we're deep cleaning out of obligation, but honestly, one of my favorite things to do is just pop on an audiobook and clean. I actually find it very calming, so I decided to make myself a latte. I started The Stranger Upstairs by Lisa M. Matlin. That is the book club pick for the book troupe hosted by Gabby, which I am a co-host on this month, so I'm really excited. Right now, I'm 33% of the way through, and it is growing on me. The first couple chapters, I wasn't really sure how I was gonna find it, because this is about a main character who has a failing marriage, has a dark past her and her husband apparently has a dark past and we don't we know nothing else about them other than she's a therapist sort of <laughs> and also is like a social media influencer and she bought this murder house a house where a husband killed his wife and so our main character Sarah Slade has bought the house and is going to renovate it and try to sell it for a profit but this house doesn't want to be renovated there are really spooky things going on within the house anytime that she is making a renovation the house seems to undo it the neighborhood actually hates her for buying the house like there's a lot of like small town energy going on and I, I am starting to enjoy it a lot more she our main character isn't a very likable main character she's also a little bit like what's the word not morally gray I don't know I can't think of it untrustworthy unreliable <laughs> she's an unreliable narrator sort of because she has a drinking problem so it's kind of playing into that a little bit of her having moments of like did I forget to do this or did I I know I locked that door didn't I or you know something like that right now it's just setting everything up up. You know, I really hope that it gets a little bit scary. I hope that it's actually paranormal and weird shit is actually going on because that is a requirement in my haunted house stories is that it actually needs to be paranormal <laughs> and not just like, oh, it was this old lady that lived in the cupboard that would sneak out at night and, you know, do things and whatever. I love when haunted house stories are actually paranormal and scary. So I hope that that is the case for this story. I'm really interested to keep going because now it's sort of doing this dual timeline thing where we're seeing news articles from the future relaying things that are about to happen in the present day timeline that we are following more closely. I am hesitantly excited to keep going. So I'm going to keep listening to it. I'm going to chug down this latte and keep cleaning. More cozy fall activities to come today. I'm really excited. Caleb is actually out getting me some ingredients. I'm going to make some pumpkin cheesecake bars. And if we have time, we might carve some pumpkins, but at the very least, we will now have pumpkins to put out on our front porch. I have my book club meeting for my Patreon at 3 p.m. And then we are hosting a fall craft night around 5 or 5.30. So it's a full day. Oh, a harvest night last night it was so fun. It was so pretty. I hope that the B-roll actually did it justice because it was just like a perfect gloomy fall night and it was so cool. So many pumpkins, so many fun lights, so many little like ghost apparition projections. Like that ghost train, they had like wind machines too that obviously you couldn't feel, but we're standing there and there's wind blowing on us and it was really fun. Not to mention the amazing glasses that we got for our little like whiskey apple jack whatever it was that they were selling. <laughs> this was an additional cost and it was called light it up and we told them we wanted the drink and then I was like light it up. <laughs> Plus, I quoted Crescent City to Caleb, and he actually understood the reference, and it was a big moment for me. If you know, you know. So yeah, I am gonna keep cleaning. I will come back once we're doing one of the little fall activities. So I'll see you so soon.
boxes from moving. And the day has finally come where we are working on actually building like my dream home library. So I wanted to start documenting the process and we're using my phone right now so that we can utilize the 0.5 function so that you can just like see the actual space. So it's probably smaller than what it looks like, but in order to actually show you what I wanna show you, the 0.5 was the best option. So I wanted to kind of go through like the layout, what the, the general plan is for bookshelves. We're very excited. I haven't had bookshelves as an adult. So basically you're walking into the room and this whole wall to the left is going to be floor to ceiling bookshelves. Well, floor to almost ceiling, uh, they're gonna go up so that there will be space on the top of the bookshelf, you know, to have another row of books. There'll be space on top to like put a plant and like have some viney plants come down and what whatnot. I'll throw up a little inspiration pic like over here or something of what the bookshelves are kind of gonna look like because they're gonna be like normal bookshelves but there will be one shorter sort of like horizontal row that we're gonna throw in there and make it look a little bit more interesting. So this wall will just be like floor to ceiling almost with books. Over the set of French doors, we'll probably just have like one single bookshelf, like spanning that whole top part portion. And then over here in this corner is going to be a little like writing nook. Caleb's gonna make a little desk right here so that I'll be able to put a chair here. I'll sit and, you know, see all my beautiful books, see the beautiful French doors leading out into our sunroom porch, and obviously have a nice little window here. It's gonna be, it's gonna be beautiful. So he's doing some drywall work in here before we can actually paint. It, but then coming out to this side, the plan is going to be again to sort of do like floor to ceiling bookshelves. But since this room doesn't have any storage, Caleb is actually going to make the bottom portion of these two walls have some like cabinets. I don't know exactly what they're going to look like. I'll throw up some inspiration pics of what we're thinking. But basically it'll be kind of like a lighter white oak natural wood throughout the whole room because I don't want it to be too dark. I don't really want a painted because the floors are already pretty dark and we want it to, you know, to still look kind of bright and airy, but still, I don't know, studious and bookshelfy. So yeah, these bottom portion is going to have some cabinets for storage. I have a lot of writing, journaling, Seems materials. I have a lot of shit that needs places to be. But then from like waist height probably up, it's going to be like bookshelves again. So it'll be almost to here and then they'll probably going to have like a diagonal shelf, you know? So it'll like meet here and then, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying. <laughs> like a corner shelf basically. I'll have a big fancy comfy reading chair right here that I can sit and read in. I want it to be big enough so that Abby can sit up there with me too. If you guys have any recommendations for like big, comfy, cozy reading chairs, like let me know because I'm in the market for something that is not super expensive, but something that looks nice and big and cozy. Let me know if there's any specific brands that I should look at. And then we're gonna have a nice big area rug. Obviously this is one of my favorite things is this little pendant light. I don't know. I. I really love it. I think it's gonna look so good. Uh, we just have to paint the walls and then we'll be able to start crafting. So Caleb already has all the wood for this first big wall right here. And I think he's gonna like break ground this week. Is that right? They can't see you. 
Yes, that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I just really love the space so much, especially with the French doors. Like, and once we get windows that are like, not heat treated. Just airtight. Just airtight, insulated, that you can't hear the wind whistling through. We'll actually be able to like open up these French doors and like, it's, it is really kind of a dream come true. I can't wait. That's it. I hope to continue the building my dream library bookshelf sort of series soon. So stay tuned on that. This is like episode one sort of like tied in to this fall weekend vlog, giving you this sort of like, this is it, this is what's happening. I'm really excited about it, can't wait to show you more. And that's it, we have to go get our little apple cider drink ready for our fall craft night, and yeah, that's it. <laughs> Before we go, I wanted to give you an update on The Stranger Upstairs by Lisa M. Matlin. I ended up finishing this this weekend. For me, this book was a really solid mix of a small town vibe, haunted house story with plausible resolutions, but those resolutions are still sort of left without a bow. Like there are many things about the end of the story that we don't know what was going on or if the house is actually haunted. Like I'm led to believe that it is, but I could see arguments where there are actual answers for things that went on in the story. And I think that that makes me feel better about it. Like I like, when my thrillers are sort of unhinged, like psychopathic, <laughs> unreliable narrators. And if a thriller has like every bow tied at the end of it, I tend to not love it as much, actually. I think thrillers are difficult for me because like I said, if it's a straightforward thriller and everything has a bow at the end, I'm a little more inclined to give it a lower rating because even if it like super surprised me, I'm still making my own thoughts on what was going on. And if I think that something else should have happened, then I'm like, oh, well, I kind of wanted that to happen instead. And it's just sort of like a mental battle with myself and the actual resolution of a story. Whereas if a thriller is a little bit like fever dreamy and unhinged, and at the end of the book, you sit there and you're like, what the hell did I just read? That is my favorite. <laughs> And I hope that that sort of makes sense. So this one was kind of a mix of both of those. So I think that I'm ending up with like a four. I'm interested to see how the conversation goes with Gabby and Meg. Over on Gabby's channel, we're doing her book club, which is the book troupe, and we'll have a live show discussion on it by the end of this month. And I'm interested to see how that discussion will alter how I feel about the story, whether it gets better in my mind or gets worse in my mind. But right now I feel, I feel okay about it. It won't go down as like one of my favorites, but I definitely feel better than and lukewarm about it. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like it's a solid four and I think that's where I will leave it until we discuss further. <laughs> but that is the end of this cozy fall filled weekend reading vlog. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check out the link in my description for 30 free days as well as 40% off your first full year membership. That is such a great deal. And thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me for a little bit. If you are still here and you don't know what to say, then leave the pumpkin emoji down below in the comments. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. I always appreciate your support. And of course, be kind to one another and happy reading. Bye.